Hello and welcome, this is Ageless John. This video is on dependency injection for Android. This is the third in my development, programming, and delivery tools series. Well, let's get right into it. Avoiding dependency injection frameworks. That's exactly the words that are used here on the developer's <laughs> website. So, uh, they're not really encouraging you to, do, to use these. However, uh, I take this with a small grain of salt. I don't think they're totally serious because uh, right after that, they actually give you the links to two of the dependency injection frameworks. I, I'm not, I don't understand the logic in that. So avoid it and then give you the link to use it. So what is that about? Anyway, dependency injection or DI. What it does, it allows developers to use code that has less coupling and is easier to test. As you develop your Android codes, uh, they're going to get more longer and they're going to get more complex and it's going to be harder and harder to test uh, your, your apps as they get larger and more complex. And this is where the dependency injection comes in. Dependency injection allows your software to be much more flexible and it helps you extend its lifetime as well as allowing it to be much easier to test. Let's get into the mechanics of how dependency injection works. Um, say for our example purposes we've got a class A which depends on the instance of a class B. Then the developer is usually going to have to call the instructor of class B inside the code of class A. This obviously leads to a tighter coupling between the two classes. Dependency injection will use an external code to satisfy dependencies. Um, this type of dependency satisfaction is commonly referred to as dependency uh, as a de dependency injector. If an object depends on other objects, it will not have to know how to create or initialize those objects. This is what reduces the amount of coupling and helps to create code that is much more modular, easier to change, and a lot easier to test. By using dependency injection, you can largely do away with constructors and factory methods in your project's business logic. Let's take a quick look at an example. And I took this right out of the Just Eat webpage, uh, which there's a link below. You can look at it. In this code, you can see car and engine. This usage makes the coupling between the two very high. Because the car class creates the new engine object, it needs to know exactly what engine it needs. Here we see that it's going to use the petrol engine. Now in this code, the engine is passed to the car through the car's constructor method. This means the coupling here is no longer high. The car class no longer needs to know exactly what engine it needs. Basically any type of engine will do if it extends the original engine class. This example shows the passing or the injecting of dependency via the car class constructor. This is a type of injection known as constructor injection. There are other types of injection as well. At its most basic level, dependency injection is the passing of dependencies into a class rather than instantiating them directly into that class. So this has been Hless John. I've been talking about dependency and injection for Android. I want to thank you for joining me and check out the links below if you want to find out more about these dependency injection frameworks. There are a variety of them out there. I've just listed a few as well as some tutorial hints and informational places that you can go for more information. Again, thank you for joining me, Ageless John, and I will see you around.